Yeah, she's just being stupid. All right, let's do this. Let's close that door. We're going to put this up here and upgrade it at least once so she can't jump out. And then we're going to take her out through here. The whole idea is that you use the environment to, you know, to block them so they can't get to you and you can get to them. That's really the key uh, to taking out zombies in the very early game, particularly when you're, you know, trying to clear a structure. Hey everybody, this is an old guy gaming here and I'm going to start a new short tutorial series on how to play Seven Days to Die on insane difficulty and nightmare speed. So the first question you might be asking is, why would anybody play the game on those settings? And that's a very good question. Uh, the answer to it really is that it makes the game more satisfying. It keeps you interested in the game longer than if you just play it on the normal settings. Because let's let's face it, when you play Seven Days to Die on the normal settings, you're all excited when you first start the game to get into a new game of Seven Days to Die. Man, I'm gonna have so much fun. I'm gonna build you know these new bases. I might try a new horde base. I'm going to explore the world, whatever you know, your motive is for playing the game. Uh, so you start playing, you have have a good time with it. But, you know, you start getting into mid-game or so, start gearing up, getting some decent weapons, and pretty soon you're walking around uh, pretty much like God and, you know, killing everything left and right. There's no more danger. The Horde Knights are usually not that big of a deal as long as you know how to build a good base. And you start getting bored with the game, so you stop playing, you go off and do something else until you come back to the game, you know, X number of months, years, whatever, later. Um, so the thing about playing the game on insane is that it's much harder and because of the fact that it's much harder um, you really you have a better sense of accomplishment and you can and the game's gonna be more enjoyable for you for a longer period of time because you're gonna get into the mid game and it's still gonna be dangerous to you. you're not gonna walk around like God and be able to just kill anything at will um, because of the fact that you know you're playing on these settings and the zombies are a lot more dangerous now you will eventually when you get into the end game you will get to the point where you know you won't have any problem holding your own even on insane nightmare but it takes a lot longer to get to that point and keep in mind too that even when you do get to that point this game is still very dangerous even in the late game even when you're maxed out in gear and the reason for that is because of the wandering hordes when you play the game on insane nightmare speed, you don't have wandering hordes, ladies and gentlemen. You have running hordes, and they can just spawn in and sneak up on you at any time and, you know, catch you unawares and take you out. So it just, you know, continues that element of danger and therefore excitement and, for me anyway, satisfaction uh, when you play the game on those settings. So that's really why you would want to do this. Plus, some of you might just want to try it and see, can I even do this uh, on these settings? And so that's uh, that's why we're going to go ahead and go through this little tutorial series um, to show you how to do it. So if you want to give it a try yourself, you can do so. All right. So a little bit about myself. I've been playing Seven Days to Die for years, and I've been playing Seven Days to Die on insane nightmare speed ever since Alpha 16. And I pretty much don't play the game on any other settings except for those settings for the reasons that I just talked about, because I enjoy the game more when I play it on those settings. Okay. Um, so that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. And again, um, I'm, this isn't going to be a long tutorial series with many, many episodes. I'm really just going to show you what you need to do to get going on an insane uh, nightmare, uh, you know, gameplay. And then, you know, depending upon how many views we got, how many questions you guys, if you guys are enjoying the series, you know, we'll kind of determine how long it will go. Uh, and we'll just kind of play that one by ear, but I'm not expecting or planning for it to be, you know, many, many episodes. Okay, so let's go ahead and start a new game. So we want to click new game. And um, I'm actually playing uh, Warriors UK uh, on, you know, on my YouTube channel for my normal Let's Play series. But in this case, we're going to um, just let, let's go ahead and just go with one of the pre-gen worlds. Um, and we're going to just call this, um, we're going to call this Insane um, Toot. Insane tutorial, okay? Um, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to basic and you have to, of course, set the game uh, to insane. So if you guys are new to Seven Days to Die, you basically have the easiest is scavenger, then you have adventurer, then nomad, then warrior, and then survivalist, and then finally insane. So this is the hardest setting. 
So what, what does insane actually mean? Well, it basically means that the zombies are a lot tougher. They're a lot harder to kill and you don't do as much damage to them. So basically zombies are going to be very hard to kill. Um, and so, you know, that's, that's important to understand. And therefore you have to change your tactics and find, you know, other ways to deal with zombies because you're not going to be able to just one shot them, especially in the early game. Now, that being said, when you get your skills and your perks up and you get high end weapons, um, for, especially for normal zombies, you will be able to eventually one shot them with headshots and stuff like that, but it's not going to happen for a while. So these guys are going to be a lot more dangerous by virtue of the fact that they're a lot harder to kill. Okay. Um, as far as the day and, uh, and night cycle goes, um, I, I like to play on 90 minutes. You know, the longer your days are, the more time you have to prepare for, you know, for the horde on day seven, assuming you're going to, you know, you're going to play with the horde on day seven and not change those settings. Right. Um, and it's going to take you longer to prepare too, because of the fact that you are playing on insane nightmare speed. So we're going to uh, leave this just on 90 minutes. Uh, daylight length is 18. We're going to keep the blood moon frequency on seven days. We're not going to change any of that stuff. Um, and we're going to turn blood moon warning off. Just because, you know, I like, to, I like to make the game as challenging as possible. This is the other real important settings here, though. So basically, as you can see, we're turning all zombie speed options up to nightmare. So everything is on nightmare. This used to be called always run, but now it's nightmare speed. So it doesn't matter if it's day or night, these zombies are going to run fast. Now, that brings up a question that um, you might be interested in learning about, and that is that if the zombies are running in the daytime and the nighttime, then that means that nighttime is not actually as scary as it normally is. That's sort of kind of true, but you do have to be aware that you're going to get more dangerous zombies, ferals in particular, out at nighttime than you will during the day. So nighttime is still more dangerous than the daytime, but... You know, once you kind of get used to, to working with and handling zombies that are running at you at nightmare speed, you know, then being out at night's actually not going to be quite as bad for you. Okay. Now, I also have been playing uh, on 300% XP multiplier on the last few playthroughs that I've done just because I've done the grind so many times and it works a little bit better for Let's Plays. But for this particular tutorial, we're going to just set this back, you know, to the default setting of 100% um, XP, uh, XP multiplier. Okay. All right. Now, as far as advanced goes, this is really up to you. But again, you know, I, I like to play the game uh, on on the most difficult settings that I can. Um, so I basically disable loot spawn. I drop everything on death. This is very, very critical to the settings of the game, because if you drop everything on death. Um, so, you know, let's talk about that for a second. So let's say you're, you know, reasonably geared out and you're a mile away from your base and you get killed. All your stuff drops where you get killed. Now you got to figure out how to traverse a mile to get back to your stuff with, you know, nothing or, or, you know, actually what you really want to do is you want to have some backup gear at your base. Um, but maybe, you know, maybe you had a mini bike and your mini bike is where you died. So now you have to walk on foot for a mile. I'm just using a mile as an example uh, or a kilometer or whatever to get to where you need to go. So, th so these are significant settings. Okay. Um, Blood Moon count, I, I keep that on 32 enemies just because my machine has a little bit of trouble with a 64 enemy, uh, enemy Blood Moon. Um, I keep airdrops off, I just don't play with them at all. And again, you guys don't necessarily have to sit, use these exact same settings that I'm using. I'm just kind of explaining to you uh, what I use and what I prefer. So if you want to turn airdrops on, uh, if you if if you don't want to drop everything on death, you know, keep your toolbar, that's entirely up to you because this tutorial is really more about how to play on insane nightmare not necessarily uh, about these other settings but these are the settings i'm going to use if you really want the ultimate challenge of the game um, th these are the settings that you'll use okay uh, so with that being said let's go ahead and start the game and we'll get in and we'll get started so um the name of the game guys when you're starting an insane nightmare game at the very beginning you really want to avoid detection as much as possible. That's really going to be the best thing that you can do to stay alive in the very early game is avoid detection. Now, you know, sooner or later you're going to get detected and we'll talk about how we're going to deal with that when it does happen. But 
Um, you want to just, you know, be as stealthy as you can and as sneaky, sneaky as you can at the very beginning game, just because you can't take these zombies on. Remember, there's two things you have to remember. They are running, and some of these zombies run faster than you can. They will catch you. You can't outrun them, even when you're sprinting at full speed. The other thing is you have to remember is that they're a lot harder to kill than they are in normal settings. So you're not going to be able to just bonk them on the head three or four times with the wood club and take them down. It's not going to work. So that being said, um, melee in the very early game is very, very tough to do. It's not impossible, but it's very tough to do. So, um, you know, you just want to kind of have that mindset where you're, you're trying to avoid them as much as you can in the very early game. Now I need to turn the mouse sensitive. Uh, sensitivity down um or the look sensitivity because it is just way over the top for me okay that's still a little bit hot let's turn that down just a little bit more so we're, we're gonna bump this down to maybe 14 we'll try that okay i think we can probably work with that all right so of course the first thing we want to do as usual is we want to start um, you know, just get through the quest because you get those four points and those four points are going to be really important. Uh, so start working on, you know, doing your bedroll and, you know, doing all the other stuff to get through the quest and do it as quickly as possible and try to stay more or less in your spawn area. If you get too far outside of your spawn area, the zombies will, will start to spawn in before uh, they normally spawn in, which I think is around noon or 2, 2 p.m. I can't remember off the top of my head. So just stay in this area as much as you can. And, um, you know, get through these quests as quickly as you can and then go from there. Okay, so let's put that bedroll down. And then we're going to pick it right back up. One of the things you want to do is keep your bedroll on your toolbar at all times in the early game. I'm going to put uh, my medical over here. I'm going to put my beverage there. Uh, we don't need this on the toolbar. The land claim block, we're going to talk about the land claim block in a little bit. Okay, uh, so... Now what we need to do is gather a couple of small stones. So let's look around for those. Okay, now we want to craft our axe. Let's get that next. We're going to take our axe over here. We're going to harvest this and get some bones so that we can make a bone shiv. That's not part of the quest, but we want, it. We want a bone shiv, so we're going to do that. We're going to get rid of the nitrate and the rotten meat for now uh, because it's not doing us any good at the moment. Okay, so now we have the bone shift. Now we need to uh, craft fiber plants and fiber shirt. Let's do that next. And I'm going to gather up a little bit more plant fiber um, so that I can make the full set of clothing, even, even though the quest only wants me to make the pants and the shirt. Because that clothing will help us out a little bit especially with temperature. Okay, uh, so it wants us to put these on, but let's go here and let's also make uh, the shoes and I'm gonna make the plant fiber hat and the gloves. And then uh, we also, once we get enough cloth fragments, which we can do from either picking cotton or finding other things for cloth, we'll make a bandana as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and equip the shirt and the pants. And that satisfies the quest, but we're also gonna put on these other items too. So our character is now uh, fully clothed with plant fiber clothing. You gotta love it. Stuff itches like hell. Okay, now we need to craft a wooden club and uh, we have enough wood to do that. So let's craft the clubs so we can satisfy the quest. We'll put that down there for the moment. Next, we need to gather some more wood uh, feathers and stone for bows. So this is, you know, this is the usual, uh, usual questing stuff that you do no matter what difficulty you're playing on. Okay, I harvested the whole tree just because we're going to need wood for other things too. Uh, let's grab some more cotton too so we can make the um, the bandana as soon as possible. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sit here and um, beat on this rock for a little while because we're going to need a good quantity of stone and then we'll keep looking for bird's nest for feathers here after I bust this rock up. Okay, we've busted up the rock. Uh, I'm not going to do anything with that coal right now. By the way, I didn't mention this before, but um, I'm assuming that everybody watching this knows the basics of Seven Days to Die. So this isn't a tutorial for new players. It's a tutorial for players that want to know how to play on Insane. So I just want to make sure we were clear on that. If you um, 
if you're interested in a tutorial on how to actually play the game in general, like, you know, as new players, let me know because I'd be willing to do that too. Um, or you can just, you know, look around. There's going to be uh, other things available for that. But uh, you're not likely to find very many tutorials out there uh, for how to play on Insane. So, uh, but yeah, just let me know in the comments if you're interested, <coughs> excuse me, in, um, you know, in a normal tutorial too, because I'd be glad to do that. Uh, also, while we're uh, talking about stuff, I just wanted to pause uh, the game for just a moment, and I do literally mean pause the game. And there's a look at that. There's a bird's nest right in front of us. And just mention that if you find uh, a value in this video, if it entertains you, if you learn from it, uh, if you enjoy being a part of the old guy gaming community, um, and you're not subscribed to the channel, please take a moment to subscribe to the channel and thumbs uh, thumbs up each video. It doesn't cost you anything at all, and it really does help the channel. Also, want to let you know. Uh, that I do have a membership going on now on the channel. And if you're interested, hit the join button, take a look at the three different tiers that are offered and the perks that you get, and decide if that's a good fit for you. I'd love to have you as a member. Thank you very much for taking your time out of your busy day to watch an old guy gaming. All right, let's get back to it. Let's uh, hit the uh, bird's nest here, and we've got some feathers. Okay, so now what we can do is make ourselves the bow, and then we're going to need to make some arrows. We're just going to turn all of those into arrows at the moment. Put that on our toolbar. Um, actually, I'm going to put the bow there. I like to put melee in the first slot and ranged in the second slot here in the early game. We want to uh, make sure that our bow is, of course, loaded uh, with the arrows, and we're good to go on that. Uh, now we need to make some wood frames, so let's do that now. Um, it's going to want us to make, uh, I guess, just one. So let's make 21, because I like to have uh, 20 wood frames on my, on my character. Okay, we'll put that down. Now it wants us to upgrade it, so let's do that really quick. Very good. Next thing it wants us to do is make a campfire. Let's get that out of the way real quick. Campfire's made. Set it down. There we go. And that should get us um, done with the quest. And we should now have uh, four points to spend. So what we're going to do is hunker down here. We're going to take a look at our points. And let's talk about this. This is really important, uh, the point, uh, points that you choose in the very early game. Um, here's what I do, okay? Some people might do something different. Um, and by the way, I don't claim to be the only person in the entire world that plays a game on insane difficulty, a nightmare speed. Some other people do too. Um, but this is just the way that I do it, okay? Uh, so the very first thing I want to do is go to agility, and I want to take from the shadows. Because what that's going to do is it's going to give me a 13% more effective chance of staying away or hiding from the zombies, having them not detect me. Okay, that's a really, really important one to take. What I also do is I go to strength and I take skull crusher. Why? Because the sledgehammer, the stone sledgehammer is going to actually be our main weapon uh, when we start the game. I also like to take a master chef uh, so that I can make bacon and eggs and, you know, the basic stuff right, right out of the chute, uh, the, you know, the teas and that sort of thing, uh, which, you know, could last us for the whole rest of the playthrough if we wanted to. And then after that, that leaves us one point left. So at this point, um, you know, you have a couple of different options uh, that you might want to consider. Um, you know, minor 69 is never a bad one to take. Archery is never a bad one to take because, you know, we are going to use uh, some archery too uh, here in the early game. Uh, intellects, never a bad one. Um, engineering in particular, because that way we can just go ahead and make the forge straight up and we don't have to worry about finding a schematic for it. Uh, plus, you know, as we advance in engineering, we can then get to workbenches and then we can get to Grease Monkey because one of our early game goals is to get to some kind of a vehicle, even a bicycle, if, if we can, as soon as possible, because that's going to be a major game changer for us. OK, so I think we're going to go ahead and take uh, advanced engineering. But if you again, uh, other good options would be archery um, or back in strength. You could also take 69er. Another one that's not a bad option in the early game is Javelin Master because you know, spears are useful in the early game too. Uh, so those are a few different options that you might consider depending upon your style of gameplay. All right. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to make ourselves a shovel. So let's do that now. And we're going to dig up some clay and then we're going to make ourselves some cobblestone. All right. So let's just stay right where we are and work on that. It's nine, a little after nine o'clock in the morning. So we should have a little more time before we start seeing the Zekers. Okay, uh, so now we're going to take uh, the clay and the stone that we have. And we're going to make, how much cobblestone can we make in total? 52. 
All right, we're not gonna we're gonna use up all of our stone. Actually, you know what? We are. I'm gonna use up all of our stone, and then I'm gonna go actually harvest some more stone. Let me make sure we actually have a. Here, let's get the stone back from this. Have another boulder around. Stone is very, very important. Um, yeah, I'm going to cancel that. I'm not going to harvest all of the stone. Let's just make 20 of those because we want to keep some stones. I don't see a boulder immediately nearby. It looks like there might be one over that way, but uh, let's just, you know, do this correct. So, all right, so we got these. Now we're going to turn these directly into flagstone blocks. Actually, no, let's turn three of these and let's keep a little bit of cobblestone on us as well. We got a deer over there, but we're not really in a, a position at this point to be able to kill it. All right, so let's talk about our toolbar now. We're going to make two more things. We're going to make a uh, a stone sledge. Whoops. So we're going to make that, and we're also going to go ahead and make ourselves a spear. And the reason we're making the spear is because it's it's just a really good early game weapon, particularly because of the fact that it has a longer reach. We're going to scrap the club. We're not even going to think about using the club at this point in the game. You can use clubs later on when you're better geared and can take some hits, but in the early game, I do not advise it. Do not advise it at all. Okay, so we have a spear. We're going to keep the spear in our inventory. We're not going to um, put it on our toolbar at the moment. Here's what we are going to put on the toolbar. Okay, we want to keep the medicine here for bleedings, uh, emergency bleeding. We want to keep the water here for emergency stamina. We want to keep the bedroll down so we can plop it down if we decide think we're going to get into trouble and have a spawn point somewhere. Um, and then we're going to, we don't need to keep the shovel on our toolbar, but we want to make sure we have wood frames and flagstone frames on our toolbar. And finally, we want to make sure we have stone. Okay, so this is our toolbar uh, layout right here. Now, here's what we're going to do. If we get chased by a zombo and we're out in the open, okay, what we can do is we can put down a frame, jump up on the frame, nerd pull up, and then put down a flagstone block. Most of the time, this is not a guaranteed 100% of the time, but most of the time the zombies will not hit the bottom frame. They will hit the second frame that you are standing on. If you have enough extra cobblestone, you could also upgrade it. And you do want to make sure you have enough cobblestone um, so that you can also repair it because it will take damage. It's going to take you a little while to kill these zombies. So you want to make sure that you can, you know, keep this repaired because they will start damaging, especially if you get like a really, you know, nasty zombie like a, a biker. Because uh, bikers are very dangerous. They're super fast, very hard to kill. Okay. If, however, you are near a building let's recover our stone from this what you can do instead is you can use the frames to shimmy up the side of the building and then you know fight the the zombos from there uh, but you do have to again you have to be careful of uh you know them the frames taking damage so you can still also use the flagstone in that situation too now, what I'm going to do, we got a boulder over there, so we need we need to get some more stone and make a little bit more uh, cobble. But, you know, this is this is very, you know, very basic stuff. It's not complicated at all. But let's say I was being chased, you know, by by a zombo and I'm not, you know, ready to take it on yet. In fact, we have a sleeper right there. Okay, let's sneak up here. Basically, if, if I'm being chased by a zombie, here, chase me, zombie. Whoa, here she comes. What we're going to do is we're just going to basically shimmy up the side here. And, you know, we just, the idea is you want to get high enough up to where they can't take the blocks out from underneath you and collapse it because it's also attached to the house. Okay. Now, in this particular case, um, she's not, she's kind of out of reach because she has another uh, the AI is basically, you know, showing her another pathway to get to us. Um, so she's going to actually be kind of hard to kill. We have, you know, we do have some arrows here, but uh, that's going to be tough to do. So what we could do um, for her is we could we could try and get down a little bit lower and see if we can get her to come down here. But we do need to be really careful about that because here again, she could uh, mess us up. Uh, what I think I'm going to do is go down... Is she going to come down this way? 
Okay, she's still kind of acting weird. So what I think I'm going to do is put this block here and jump up so I can get closer to her and then see if I can whack her with this. Okay, I can't quite reach her, so I'm going to take the spear instead. See, this was actually not a really good um, place for me to do this just because the stairs are there, right? If the stairs hadn't been there, then she would have kind of stayed in a, a little bit better location for us to get to her. But this is why you want to make a spear, because it's got excellent reach. Now, this uh, this is uh, Darlene, zombie, zombie Darlene. She is very, very dangerous, because she's one of the zombos that are, are faster than you. You cannot outrun her out in the open. She will catch you. Um, you know, so she's a relatively weak zombie in terms, you know, in terms of, or compared to other zombies, but, um, in the very early game, uh, she'll catch you out in the open and she, she'll take you out. So she's actually quite a bit more dangerous than you might think. You'll get to know which zombies are the, are the super like scary fast ones as, as you play along. And I'll try and point them out to you as well. Some of them you can outrun, some of them you can't. So that's really what it boils down to. So it's important to know what you're dealing with uh, when you decide how you're going to deal with said zombie. Okay, now we need to get some more. Uh, we need to get some more cobblestone going. Uh, so what I'm going to do is go over to this boulder here and get some more stone, and just kind of keep you know keep my eye out. When we start to see the zombies come in, uh, which they're going to you know very soon here, then we're going to have to really start being. Uh, as stealthy as possible. Uh, but let's go ahead and harvest a, some more stone so we can make uh, a few more flagstone blocks and a little more cobblestone and have a good supply of that. Alright, while we're waiting for this cobblestone here, uh, I actually have enough cloth to make the bandana, so let's do that. That'll give us a little bit more clothing protection. We don't need the extra bone for now, so we're going to toss that. We have very limited, you know, inventory space, of course, so we want to be careful. We don't really need the plastic right now either. The glue, uh, you know what actually we're going to do with the glue? We're going to turn it into duct tape. Uh, so that frees us up two slots and gives us the all-powerful duct tape. Super important. You can always scrap your shovel at this point, too, and, and so it's really easy to make another one. Um, so we might end up just doing that, too, because we don't need any more clay for a bit here. I know some of this stuff I'm talking about is, is more basic gameplay stuff, but, you know, it's important. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, make, let's see, we can make a total of 14, but we don't need that many right now. Let's make, say, five more. That'll give us a total of six. Now, there is something you can do instead of using the cobblestone when you make this little tower. And I have done this before, and it works It works fine up until you decide, you know, find a place to have a base. And that is you can actually use the land claim block uh, for your tower. Um, so the idea here, oh, be careful of this too. You see how the ground is a lot more sunk down? So that means you're not going to be as high up, and the zombos, you know, could, could get to you easier. So you can also use the land claim block um, like that. Why would you do that? Sucker has 7,000 hit points. That's why you would do it. And then, you know, to make another one, it's just like five stone, I believe. Uh, yeah, it's only five stone. So as soon as you set, set that down, go ahead and make another one. So if you're wondering, okay, well, why wouldn't I make uh, all of them out of uh, land claim blocks? Well, the thing is, is as soon as you set a new land claim block down, this one automatically breaks, right? And so it's no longer good. Whereas if you you know, set up a series of these little towers with flagstone, then you can reuse them later on if you're back in the area. And then, like I said, once once you get a base going and you put the land claim block down, which you're going to want to do because it's going to stop zombie spawns in a very large area, you know, then you can no longer use this technique at all because of the fact that, you know, uh, it'll, it'll ruin your land claim in your base and the zombie spawns will come back in. Okay, so this is an alternative. It works fine in the very early game. But it would be a better idea, I think, to get in the habit of just using the flagstone blocks. You know, if you'd get a flagstone block down and you upgraded a cobble, it's going to be pretty tough. There's not really any zombie in the early game that's going to easily break that. They certainly can, but not easily. Okay, so very good. We are 
uh, doing well so far. It is noon, so we'll probably start seeing Zombos here pretty soon. Uh, like any other Seven Days to Die game uh, situation, uh, we're going to want to go ahead and find a base, and we probably is going to behoove us to move uh, towards the trader, uh, which happens to be right there. Oh, man, that is lucky. Oh, my goodness. That's, like, super lucky. Okay, so let's hop down here. We're going to just pull that down. Now, we want to keep stones when we're out and about. Um, we want to keep stones on our toolbar at all times because if you didn't know this, you can throw stones to distract zombies in this game. Remember, our number one rule at the very early part of the game is to avoid detection as much as possible. So we're going to we're going to just be on our guard, you know, because again, we're going to start seeing zombies spawn anytime. Uh, we're close to the snow biome, but the snow biome is incredibly dangerous on Insane Nightmare. Mostly because lumberjack zombies run very fast. There's an egger. Uh, they run very fast, and they are very tough. So they're kind of like the biker, <clears throat> and they're all over the place. So you are asking for some serious trouble if you go into the snow biome on Insane Nightmare. Okay, so we have an egger over there. I'm not really worried about egger because I can outrun him. He does hit hard, though, and he's harder to kill. So he's dangerous from that standpoint, but he is, you can outrun Edgar, so I'm not too worried about him at this point. Uh, what we want to do, of course, is get into the trader uh, so we can, you know, start using him. The, the thing is, though, is like I said, he's in the snow, which is not good. Uh, but let's just kind of sneak around this way and just be on our on the lookout for lumberjacks. And, you know, we have mountain lions in the snow, too, and th those guys can be really dangerous as well. But it's really the lumberjacks that make the snow terrible, plus the fact that you get cold really early on, too. So what I'm going to do is Edgar's kind of coming this way. I'm just going to throw a stone to distract him to get him out of here. Okay. Now, here's a trick that you, you might not know. When you see these double doors like this, uh, and especially if you're being chased and, you know, you're trying to get in really quick, if you just double tap it, right, you can open it up and run through and it'll close automatically. Just tap, tap. Okay. There's a little little trick for you. Hey, jackass, can I lighten that backpack up for you? Okay, so we got Trader, uh, trader Wrecked here. Um, and so what we want to do is, you know, kind of take a look at his inventory really quick and just see what he has. But there's not going to be a whole lot of things, you know, that we're going to be able to afford at this point. Um, one of the things, though, that I do want to do is I want to take a quest from him. Um, now, trust me on this. Do not take a buried supplies quest on Insane Nightmare Speed in the early game. Don't do it. You will die. Why? Because if you didn't already know this, when you do a buried supplies quest from a trader, as soon as you open and loot the stuff in the crate, what's it do? It spawns a bunch of zombies. You're stuck down in a hole, or you're out in the open, um, and you're just going to get rushed by nightmare speed zombies, and they're going to eat you for breakfast, okay? Um, I would hold off on the buried supplies until at least you have a bicycle, so that way you can hop on it and get away from them. But until you have a bicycle or a mini bike or a vehicle, um, just, I, I wouldn't do buried supplies. Do not recommend it in the early game. Uh, so what we want to do is a fetch and or a clear. Um, I'm going to do the clear. If you want work from me, okay. you um, stand in And the, the way that we're going to do this you know, is we're going to use do. the environment to prevent the zombies to, uh, from getting at us while we take them out. Okay, let's t uh, hop up here and take a quick look and see. we got a wolf over there. Wolves are not distracted by stones, so be aware of that. Um, I think what we're going to do is go around this way back into the forest part of this biome and bail off this way. Now, I want to stay close to the trader. We don't have to be in his backyard per se, but we want to be close to him. But we don't want to be in the snow biome either for, you know, obvious reasons. So what we're going to do is we're going to start looking for a base location uh, somewhere close by, maybe over there, as long as here again we're not actually into the snow itself. And, oh, this is the garage he wants us to clear. Wow, that was close. Okay. Um, well, let's go ahead and do that then, since we're here. Um, 
now you you know you guys are probably all familiar with the concept of double looting and i sometimes i'll do that too but you know we're just we're right now we're just mostly concerned with the tutorial so i'm not going to worry about double looting all right so we we have to kill um all the zombies uh in and around this garage so what we're going to do is there, there's a couple ways you can approach this uh, because we do have the garage here you know, we could retreat to the roof if we get in trouble. But the thing about that is we have to kill the zombies and it's going to be hard to kill them from the roof. So what we want to do is we want to have a safe area that we can retreat to uh, if things get a little too hot and heavy for us, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to set up our little platform here. And this one I'm going to upgrade to cobblestone because now I have plenty of cobble. And if you want to, you can upgrade the bottom one too. It's not a bad idea if you have enough wood, which in our case we don't. Um, and then I'm just going to have a frame sitting down in front of it that I can hop up on if we need to retreat to it. Okay, let me go grab a little bit more wood here before we do anything more. And I'm just looking to make sure there's no Zekers around. Be really careful cutting trees down because as you probably are aware, that will attract nearby zombies. Okay, before I take this tree all the way down, I'm just going to look around and make... Oh, shoot. We screwed up because I got too far away. Oh, man. That sucks. I didn't, I didn't think we were that far away. Uh, for Pete's sake. Okay, whatever. We'll, we'll just go get another one from, uh, from the trader. Anyway, what I was saying is I'm looking around and making sure there's no zombies within sight because as soon as this goes down, um, it's going to make a lot of noise. And I'm also going to run away from it, too, just in case I miss somebody. Oh, that sucks that we failed the quest. Okay, well, it happens, right? Um, we can still do this, though. We're going to clear the place anyways um, just to see how, how to do it. Okay, so um, almost certainly there's going to be one or two Zombos in there. Let's also take a quick look. In fact, you know what I'm going to do here is I'm going to nerd pull up on the roof. And we're just going to take a quick peek in the backyard area, too, because there's some zombies down here. Okay, let's sneak... All right, so we've got a businessman zombie and a cheerleader zombo, and we have an open gate. All right, so let's go back this way. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. And we're going to see if we can get to this gate and close it. And I'm also going to just upgrade it a little bit. Okay, so let's leave those guys where they are. Okay, we have Nurse Nancy over there. She's very dangerous. She's super, super fast. So before we even deal with anybody at all in there, let's get up on our little pedestal here, and let's pull Nurse Nancy over here and dispatch her because we don't want her around while we're trying to uh, do our thing inside the building here. Oh, my goodness. The drop on this thing's terrible. There we go. All right, Sledgehammer time. Sledgehammer is an awesome early game weapon if you can use it from a place of safety. It, uh, because of the fact that it has a chance to stun and it, it can do a lot of good damage, but it does, you know, use a fair amount of stamina too. But see, we killed her in like, what, three hits? Well, we, we, we along with the arrow, I should say. But that did take too long. So the thing is, is if I'm using the sledgehammer up here and I run out of stamina, I could just stop and rest for a couple of minutes. Uh, well, not minutes, a couple of seconds to get my stamina back. Whereas if I'm down running away from a zombie that's chasing me at nightmare speed, well, good luck to you. You know what I mean? Okay, so let's put this down here. We're going to go back here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pop open. I'm just looking around to make sure there's nobody else in the immediate vicinity that could cause us problems. We don't want any unwelcome guests here. Okay, we got Ronald McDonald over there. Let's deal with him as well. He's reasonably fast. Not as fast as Nurse Nancy, but still, you know, dangerous enough for sure. So let's get Ronnie over here. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll give him a power shot because we can afford to use the stamina. Of course, we missed that one. You can, you can get a fair number of hits off uh, just with normal attacks uh, using the stone sledge. Yeah, he's dead. So that didn't, that wasn't too bad. I mean, it took a few hits and I missed him a couple times too. 
All right, I think we're I think we're okay. I don't see anybody else around the the place here. That's just the sleepers. Let's go out this way a little bit and just make sure there's no one behind that we couldn't see before. All right, I think we're good. Okay, so we woke up the zombos inside. So what we're going to do is see where are they, what are they hitting? Okay, she's hitting this. So let's break this block out. We want to be careful of the, the ones in the back there. We don't want to wake them up yet. Okay, and then we basically just go to town on her with a sledgehammer. See? There you go. Now we have someone else somewhere. Oh, I'll bet she's up above. Yeah, she's probably up above. So let's uh, nerd pull up. Cheerleader is very dangerous. She's super fast, so... Be careful of her. We don't have to worry about her in this particular case, but I mean, if she caught us out in the open is all. Where are you going? She, she must have, she must have fallen down below. Okay, let's go back over here. Yeah. Okay, come over here. There you go. Off with your head. Okay, so we've dealt with those three. Uh, just looking around, making sure there's nobody else uh, in the immediate vicinity. Now, we have to be more careful with how we're going to take these uh, these two out because, um, you know, if we open this door and put a block down, they could still potentially jump through it. So I think what we're going to do in this case is we're going to go through here okay so what we could do is put a block in there and fight uh, these zombies through here but you know what I think we're going to actually do instead of doing that is let's just Fight them out on our little platform. Ah, uh, she's she's stuck on a fence. Yeah, she's just being stupid. All right, let's do this. Let's close that door. We're gonna put this up here and upgrade it at least once so she can't jump out and then we're going to take her out through here there we go all right then we and we still had have businessman zombo over here he was just right over in this corner wasn't he yeah he's right there okay So let's see if we can pop him. And then we'll take him out here too. So anyway, the whole idea here, of course, is that you... Oh, nice. Lucky shot there. Uh, the whole idea is that you use the environment to, you know, to block them so they can't get to you and you can get to them. That's really the key uh, to taking out zombies in the very early game particularly when you're you know trying to clear a structure all right you guys i'm gonna let you go here i hope you guys enjoyed this episode if you did please hit that like button subscribe to the channel leave a comment share out the video let me know what you think uh, about the series and um let me know uh, if you're interested in, like in a normal tutorial too but uh, this one of course is for insane nightmare and we'll just keep going for a while until uh, we get to a point where i think you guys have you know have seen everything you need to see to survive in an insane nightmare playthrough. All right, we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.